Welcome to... <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. We are approaching the end of the bodywork on the passenger side of the bus, and on this episode, we'll be covering everything from getting rid of oil canning, welding in my final window sill repair, and getting this side of the bus ready for epoxy primer. Along with all that, there's a lot of exciting news to cover and some sweet deals I came across, so let's get right into the video. We'll start off this video with fixing the oil canning in the quarter panel of the bus. It seems at some point it was dented and filled with Bondo, and now we've got a bit of an issue. That's not good. Obviously the repair is solid because it's, you know, it's in there. No gap, large gap. That's actually around where we want it. Like this area right here. All right. Now, if you'd like to see in more detail how I'm using the acetylene torch in order to remove oil canning from the panel, I do have an episode covering that and it'll be linked above here. So make sure to check that out. No oil can in there. It actually feels extremely hard. It feels like reinforced metal. That's crazy how well that works. Now the thing is I do have to straighten it out a little bit more, but dang, that worked out really well. It's also a lot smoother already. Let's see if we can get it as smooth as possible. So we no longer have oil canning down here, but shrinking it has moved the oil canning up here. Hopefully it doesn't just keep moving up and up and up. <laughs> Probably don't want to go any higher than this. If you're planning on using this method to remove oil canning from your panel, I do urge you to be as careful as possible because it is possible to just ruin your panel. We don't really have any oil canning left. It's a little wavy though, it sucks. I wish I was good enough to like smooth this all out. I don't have one of those little stud pullers to weld and pull. What I'm doing here is using a dry erase marker so that I'll be able to see the highs and the lows after I sand it down. Also, at this point, my mic started doing this really weird thing, so I'm going to have to be dubbing over everything from here on out, unfortunately. So what I do is sand it down with the flat block and then anywhere that you see that there is some dry erase marker left, that means you have a low spot. And it's a lot easier to visualize this way than to just look at it without really being able to tell what's a high or low spot. Lo que vamos a estar usando aquí es este metal que usé mi... No, I'm just kidding. So what we're using here is the old sissy bar from my motorcycle and a hammerhead that I had lying around, maybe like a five pound hammer, and then a vice grip. I'm going to be putting this all together to make a custom dent puller, which ended up working out pretty well, especially that I just made out of scraps. Now, I know I could just go ahead and buy one of these, but there's something fun about making your own tools and being able to use creativity to your advantage, and it's just fun to make stuff. So, unfortunately, the hole in the hammer is too small for this to fit in it, and it's also oval shaped. I think I'm gonna grind two sides of this flat, and that'll kind of let it slide back and forth. Probably about this much, it doesn't have to slide too much. Something that is key here is to ensure that the axis of pulling is lined up with where the mouth of the vice grip grabs. So I had to do a little bit of bending in order to make that happen. Let's see if we can bend it here. Okay. The idea is to now bend it back around here so that the clamp itself will be in line. I'm gonna weld it on there. So first we'll bend this back to get that correct angle. One of my favorite parts about creating tools to solve problems is that you get to use techniques or maybe learn new techniques in order to make the tool itself. So it's all a learning experience. Ooh, still hot. That's mostly in line. That'll do. That was easy to find. I just had to go to my dad's garage. I don't know what it came off of, but it's part of the tool now. <laughs> oh, that ain't ever coming off. So once again, the audio in this clip is ruined, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit more dubbing, but not to worry, this shan't happen in the future as I have bought these Rode 2 wireless mics. The quality from now on should be a lot better, and that's thanks to viewers like you. But what I'm explaining here is essentially, I plan on using my stick welder in order to attach these uh, TIG filler rods to the panel and be able to pull from that. That's essentially the plan I had, but things don't always go the way that you expect them to. Ah. 
How did I get it to stick over there and I can't get it to stick here? What if we stick it and then MIG it? What I ended up doing was sticking it onto the sheet metal using the stick welder and then where they were attached to the sheet metal, MIGging them into place. And this seemed to work out a lot better and I was able to pull some dents out. It's certainly not ideal and there are better ways to do this, there's tools for this, but it worked for me. I also went ahead and bought myself some guide coats so that I'd be able to see exactly what I was doing and I polished up my hammer uh, because having a polished hammer is very important when it comes to smoothing out your sheet metal. I then spent the next hour with the hammer and dolly trying to get things as smooth as possible. Hammering and dollying takes a lot of practice and I'm still not very good at it. And these are the dents that I was able to get from behind though. Where I used the puller, I couldn't really reach behind it. So that's the reason that I used it. I then figured I'd use a tool that I've had sitting around for a while, which is this shrinker disc. And that's in order to get some of the high spots to lay flatter. Now, if you're curious how to use this, Carl Fisher from Make It Custom has a good tutorial on how to use it. So I'll link that because I'm not good at using it, so I can't really explain how to use it. I think it's working. We'll keep going. I spent a bit more time using the shrinking disc in order to get some of those high spots flattened out. But I was starting to get tired of working on this one spot for so many hours, so I decided it was time to get Mallory in the garage and open up some of our new tools. How do you put it together? I can never be an actress. <laughs> Ew, it's soaking wet. I hope that's water, by the way. It is water. Oh thank God. <laughs> do something sharp. Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Funny story behind this. Chris lost his respirator. Urgent, so we got a new one. It's the... Respirator 6800. <laughs> That's yeah. a new thing. You're, you're gonna look so legit. Well, it's so that I don't have to shave my beard all the time. Thank God. <laughs> Ooh. This looks cool. Look at that color palette. <laughs> What's this for? It's a dye grinder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you're paying for when you help us subscribe. Filters. And then whatever the next is. You know there's a knife right here. Hey, uh, this works phenomenally. Ta -da. Wow. You know how much this pack cost me? It was like 10 bucks. And like a pack or just one of these at Ace is like seven or eight bucks. Wow, these are so neat though. Whoa. I'm getting claustrophobic. <laughs> but you look cool. I don't know if it's in all the way. Alright, uh, let's test it. Really? It's a game changer right there. I told Mallory to hide our address. This is what she does. This is from Dave C. Chris is excited about this. Don't cut the portrait. Whatever. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Dave C. You, this is yours? No. And he gave you this? Yeah, I guess. What a Chad. Open it. Thanks, Dave C. Ooh! It's not gonna break. Okay. This thing punches holes through metal. Mm -hmm. why, why is it slimy? That's the oil. <laughs> so greasy. That's the stuff. Oh my dude, can we wipe it off? How many napkins are you gonna use for that? Oh, sorry, oil bursts in the middle. It works. It does. 
With all of our goodies unboxed, I put Mallory to work for a total of 10 minutes, and then it was time to continue where we left off in last episode. If you remember, I replaced the windowsill on the passenger side, but I'm still yet to weld on the clip that allows me to put on the sliding door track cover. Due to the fact that the channel that the sliding door track cover sits on Go spot welded onto the metal that's there. I want to ensure that there's no rust left behind that might come back to my new piece of metal. That's why I'm using navel jelly and a wire wheel and making sure I get everything as clean as possible because any little rust that's left behind leaves room for it to come back because rust is like a cancer. I've said it many times before and I'll say it again. So I let the navel jelly sit overnight and the next day it had done its work, you can see it's turned black, and then using the wire wheel again, I remove that, and then you end up with relatively clean metal. Now I will take this moment to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Most of you watching are probably not subscribed. And don't forget to hit that like button down below and leave a comment. Every single comment makes a very big difference in the algorithm. And lately the videos have been doing really good, and it's thanks to all of you regular viewers who are leaving comments and letting me know what you think about the videos. I appreciate it a lot. You can see this has come out wonderful, but now we still have this little hole to fix here and this patch to do. We'll make it work. Now this little piece that I'm custom fitting here was due to the fact that when I cut the rail, I didn't account for this little extra section. Shout out to Joan in the back, Mallory's mom. She visited and uh, took Mallory to Costco. And while this little patch was easy to do, as you can see, there's a pretty big gap that I'm filling there, but with a little bit of practice and uh, temperature control, you could cross some pretty big gaps and fill some holes if you need to. And I've learned this along the way. It's taken me a long time to figure out exactly what temperature to not blow a hole through and be able to cross gaps. It's not exactly necessary to sand this down before you put on your zinc weld through primer, but I want to ensure that my surface is as clean and grease free as possible. So I like to give it a little bit of sand and then wipe it down to ensure that that zinc primer is going to adhere and create a good barrier between the two pieces of metal. So last time I did this on the other side, it was very difficult to get it to stay in the correct place. It wasn't very easy to clamp. So I ended up using painter's tape to hold it in place and then just push it together with my thumb to ensure that it was flush with the metal behind it. It's not a structural piece, so this worked out well and it's in the perfect positioning. I'd say it is a hundred times better than it was before. And I'm quite pleased with it. So as you can see where this mounts, uh, well, it's gone. So. We're going to have to replace most of this section here, which is fine. And replace most of that section we did, and it looks better than it ever had before. And along with this new sliding door track cover, I'd say it looks like it just came off the factory floor. At this point, I got a text from my good friend Tyler with the 78 bus informing me that there were brand new windshields for sale for 135 bucks, and it was only two hours away. So it was time to do a little bit of a road trip. Mallory and I decided to take the scenic route there, and even though it did take a little bit more time to get there, it was worth it because the views were pretty nice, and this place was kind of in the middle of nowhere, so while it was difficult to find, we finally found our way there, and I really didn't know what to expect. Turns out these people had moved their shop from somewhere in Georgia all the way to Alabama and they had tons of parts, quality parts too, Wolfburg West seals, um, West Coast metric seals, and all kinds of bug parts and bugs and weird things, I don't know what this is, like a dune buggy or something, and they were a really nice couple. There were also tons of buses outside and while some were for sale, I decided it wasn't time to move on to another project. And the price was so good, I bought an entire crate of windshields and a box full of seals.
And with all of that loaded up, it was time to make the two and a half hour trip back home. When we got back home, Justin was pulling up, and that's the guy I bought the Subaru from uh, quite a few months ago. If you remember, I made a custom shortened wiring harness, started the engine using my modified wiring harness, and then dropped the engine. So now it's time for him to pick it up. I actually have a mega winch now. So well, 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 I didn't do shit. Yeah. Somehow we'll attach this to the trailer so we can pull it onto it. Okay, cool. That's all I could think of. Alright. Yeah. I think it'll reach. Video the behemoth. I got a new smolder. <laughs> I was gonna buy a gas tank for this one. The tanks themselves are like 300 bucks. This way. Alright. So Justin pulled up with a trailer, but no winch and no way to load the Subaru onto the trailer. But thankfully I had some scraps lying around and after a little bit of brainstorming we came up with the idea of welding a receiver onto the front of his trailer. This would allow us to attach this bigger winch onto the trailer in a way that is relatively safe. Now this is my first time using this really big welder so it took me a minute to get all the settings dialed in but after I did it welded like a dream. Now this welder is far too big to be using for sheet metal. It doesn't really go that cold but for structural welds and big stuff like this it is invaluable. That's beautiful. Oh yeah. <laughs> Put a pin through there. And as long as the pin doesn't share. Gucci. It ain't right. So we didn't have the controller here. And I'm not proud of this setup. But if it works, it's not stupid. Check it out. The ground pin. And then one of these is a solenoid switch on and switch off. And then one is for in. And one is for out. You just move the clutch around and it works. Nope, we're good. Oh yeah, we've done it. We've done it. That looks heavy. It's gonna go nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> looks like the glass made it in one piece. This might require both of us. Get out. I bought a crate of VW windshields. <laughs> I one for me and then two for my buddies. They made it without breaking. <laughs> and just like that, Mallory can no longer complain about a Subaru sitting in our yard. And it was time to get back to work on the bus. Now, I was pretty excited to use my die grinder for the first time. Of course, lube it up. And it was perfect for reaching in those hard to reach areas. Of course, I'm going to continue to use my Aircraft Stripper Ultra whenever I can as it just saves you a lot of extra work and it makes the paint come right off. At this point, my goal is to get this entire side of the bus free of rust, free of any old paint so that it can all get epoxy primed and ready for body work so that I don't have to worry about it. I'll be using a pretty coarse wire wheel here in order to get the rust from where the sliding door seal goes and well, it's time to move on to that sliding door itself. Oh, oh, oh that's a close one. And now, whoop, ah, boom. Oh, what the? What the heck is that?
Like I said before, I'm trying to get this all down to bare metal so I could deal with any underlying issues as there are many little rust pits where the paint had chipped that have actually gotten down all the way to the metal. So I'm using Osfo in order to treat the majority of that surface rust and then scuffing it up with a Brillo pad, just getting rid of the most rust that I can at first. I then decided that I would install the sliding door back on the bus, kind of just to see how everything was looking, but also because it'd be easier to work on the sliding door once it's on the bus. You know, I don't have to be on my knees as I'm doing all the grinding and dealing with all the rust. Things were starting to look really good. I was liking how everything was lining up, but the sliding door track cover had this little clip here. I assume that that's because it is meant to be used on either the European model or the American model. So I just cut it off and it doesn't need it because it actually bolts on there with the little bolt. I then decided I would put the passenger door back on, which I've worked on in previous videos so that I could get the entire look at the side of the bus and see how everything was looking. And all my lines look lined up. Now all I have to do is deal with the deeper rust pits that hadn't come out before. And I have a few techniques to show you that I like to use. First I'll go over it with the carbide disc and some Osfo, wipe it down, and then if there's any deep, deep rust pits like this one right here, I'll get my wire wheel grind it, spray it with Osfo, and continue that process until the pit is completely clean. I find that this really coarse wire wheel on the drill seems to do a really good job at digging deep into these pits. I've had to do this before. And once you spray it with Osfo and you see that it no longer turns black, you know that you've gotten rid of all the rust and you might be left with a little pit, but there's no longer rust in there. And at this point, I decided to go over everything with 40 grit in order to get it ready for that epoxy primer. And also because it would make for a really satisfying side shot of the bus, having everything look, you know, one nice smooth metallic color. Couldn't have done it without this. That's sponsor. And at this point, it's hard to believe that this actually was a roof swap from a different bus with how good everything looks. You can't even tell where the seams are at. It just looks like a nice, clean, rust-free bus. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I'd like to thank you for watching all the way through as watch time makes a big difference on these videos. And a big shout out to Chris Crawford for being our first Patreon. We now have a Patreon and you can join for as low as $1 a month. Any amount helps and it goes directly to supporting the channel and helping it to get better and the videos to get better. And there will also be the Vangabonders Amazon wishlist in the description as some of you have asked me to make an Amazon wishlist in order to help support the channel. Now it's 1am and I'm pretty tired so I'll see you guys in the next one. I haven't even drank.